everyone, and welcome to The Propcast. My name is Louisa Dickens, co-founder of LMR Ray and board director of the UKPA, and I shall be your weekly host. Each week for 30 minutes, we'll be connecting the VCs, prop tech startups, and real estate professionals globally, and assist in bridging that famous communication gap we all love talking about. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the PropCast. Today, we are talking with Prasan Kell, the CEO and co-founder of Rise Buildings, and Tim Conway, the commercial portfolio manager for Galob and company. And we'll be discussing whether prop tech is or isn't really just about the tech. And I would like to welcome them both to the show. Thanks for having us. It's great to be on. Thanks. Now, for those who are listening in today, Prasan is, like I said, the CEO and co-founder of Rise Buildings, which is a property technology platform powering connections between people and buildings. Prasan's extensive experience in the real estate industry working with and alongside owners, operators, developers, and asset managers has given him a unique insight into creating operational efficiencies and occupant experiences in buildings. And to give you a background to Prasan's career, he has managed project and property operations of all commercial property assets from office, multi-family, retail, the list goes on, and has had the opportunity to perform in development roles on projects ranging from the iconic 90-story Waterview Tower, a 60-story um, Elysian Hotel and private residences to 3,600-unit master plan river line development in the heart of Chicago to God, a 2,700-acre master plan island development in the Caribbean. And so a fairly varied experience of in real estate. Now, Prasan is an avid technologist and innovator and has leveraged his electrical engineering background and real estate roots into a fast growing property operations and occupant experience platform called Rise Buildings, which he'll tell us plenty more about later. But a brief summary is it's a mobile first technology solution for properties that streamlines the end user experience while driving operational efficiencies and creating value for all the stakeholders. So Prasan, thank you for joining us. And time to give you an introduction to Tim, who's also going to be joining us, who is one of Rise Building's clients. Tim is a commercial portfolio manager for Gallup and company, like I mentioned earlier, and oversees the operations for the commercial department with a hands-on approach that produces maximum values, reduces operating costs, and enhances the value of each asset. Now, Tim, like Prasan, has a solid amount of experience in real estate with over 25 years and is responsible for over 4 million square feet of office and retail space in Chicago and then a few other areas. Now, with this portfolio, he supports the development of prop tech initiatives at Gala by serving on their planning committee. Since its founding 60 years ago, Gala and its affiliates have owned, leased at, or managed more than 50 million square feet of commercial mixed use and multi-family real estate. So once again, thank you both for joining us on the show. And why don't we start the questions with Prasan, talk us through your journey from real estate to, you know, building an established tech company, which we know as Rise Buildings. Sure. Thanks again for having me, Lou. This is great. I love love what you do. Long time listener, first time caller, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the journey really began in the world of real estate and, and Tim knows this really well. I had the pleasure of working with Tim many, many moons ago at Golub and Company. And, and really, as I was building these buildings and had a chance to uh, participate in overseeing the portfolio that Golub had at the time, I really learned all of the ins and outs of what goes on in real estate, right? And a few other positions I held throughout my career in real estate. And, and, and frankly, I kept running into the same challenge, which was I was trying to make things as Tim is today, make things in my properties way more efficient, way more painless than, than they, they were in the, in the world of real estate for, for all of time. And I kept running into the same two hurdles, which are one, as I tried to make things more efficient. I was forced into buying multiple fragmented solutions that didn't play well together in the building. So you take all the things that go on in a building, like visitor management and booking a room and paying your mm. rent and putting in a service ticket. And, 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 and there's about 45 different things that go on <laughs> in the building. When you do them in a fragmented kind of disassociated manner, 
they're inefficient, not a, not efficient. And then second thing that was going on is because there were so many software and hardware and different websites and apps and this and that, that people were told to use to do each and every one of these things, uh, there was zero engagement in these buildings. So the two things that I was trying to do in real estate were actually backfiring if I tried to do them with kind of disjointed solutions. So I literally, you know, one fine day jumped out of a perfectly good career in real estate and decided to do something about it and launched Rise Buildings. And um, tell us, tell us a little bit more about your product. I gave a very, very basic introduction to it. And then like, Tim, I'd love for you to step in and tell us how you came across that product. But Brassan, is for you if you start first. Sure. Yeah. The way we approached the problem was, you know, back to, again, there, there are too many different fragmented solutions and they cost a whole bunch of money when you, when you stick them all together. The way we approached the problem was let's build a total technology stack for real estate. So if you look at the world of real estate, in, in, at least in my view of it, falls into kind of three major pillars. The first is access. And while Rise is not an access control company, we don't run the pipes and wires that do the right thing that that unlock the door, we deeply integrate to those systems so that we can, in fact, unlock the door. So look at Rise as an access enablement company, uh, not a control company. The second major pillar is operations. Everything that goes on inside the building, the daily activities of staff, everything from an incident report all the way to service ticket triage to preventive maintenance, visitor management and reservations like book the conference room, take a payment for something. And there's a long list of everything that goes on inside of real estate day in and day out that not just staff members, but occupants need to get done. Uh, the, the property manager needs to see at, a, at an overview and triage level. So really taking the daily activities and making them fully automated, not, not you know, hey, book an amenity. And when you press that button, it tells you which number to call. Well, that's not, that's not technology. That's just a website, right? Mm. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's basic. What it should really be is book that amenity, pick your hours, pay for it, and the door unlocks for you because you've booked that amenity and only for you, right? That's how it should be. So that's the second kind of operations pillar. And as a result of those two very deep kind of gateway features, we drive a tremendous amount of engagement in the in the tenant experience arena. So people actually use the platform every single day. We'll see 30, 40 percent of a building population open the app and do something in it uh, for more than 10 seconds, which means an engaged bit of time every single day. So now you can start delivering great value to the building, like engaging content and the building itself can promote their brand via our branded platform and really start to get the occupants to connect with each other, creating this connective tissue of community in your building. So that's the third pillar. And then there's a fourth pillar that's really the advanced layer of analytics and data that stems from all of this throughput of the first three pillars, our platform allows you to look at things like space utilization using our patented beacon platform over time or in real time. It can do things like facilitate contact tracing, very relevant to the world that mm. we li live in today, and, and so on and so forth. So there's a whole fourth kind of advanced layer of AI and analytics that's built on top of all of the great data that comes from the platform. And Tim, tell us how you were first introduced to Rise Buildings and... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, you know, I've known Prasan for 15 years now and we're we're friends who obviously work together at Gallup and Company. And frankly, we, we have talked about this challenge for many, many years and and trying to, you know, as Prasan said, defragment solutions for all of our, our tenants in, inside our buildings. So as he left Gallup and Company and started to pursue you know, founding Rise Buildings, we kept in touch. And so as, as he launched Rise, I, I became very interested in it. And it's proven to, to be everything that, that he's planned it out to be. And is the, as one of his clients, is a particular part of the product, obviously, Preston just went into the four parts of it, which, <laughs> which is used a bit more by your business or where you see more value? Sure. You know, I think I think he touched on it and and it's really integration. It's integrating all of the different facets. 
And, you know, for, for la- I'm not sure if Prasan likes this term or not, but, but I like it. You know, it's a remote control for your building. And I, I think, and it's a pretty sexy one on your, on your smartphone that can do all of these different things that you need to do when you're a tenant in one of our buildings. And it, it, you know, for me is, is kind of a lost leader, this, this technology that gives the, the tenant what they need. For me, it's more our ability to market our brand and to make the connection with our tenants really in, in an emotional way to solve their problems and make their lives easier. And, and that makes them happy and that makes them satisfied. And, and it draws up all those, those feelings that we want them to feel when they're inside one of our buildings. Yeah. And Prasan, you know, I've heard you speak about the functional capabilities of your product and how that's really table stakes for a successful prop tech company. What do you exactly mean by that? Is that, and surely that will probably tie in quite nicely with what Tim sort of just said. Yeah. You know, I think there's a, you know, to be fair, there's a lot of noise in the just globally, the prop tech space, right? There's a lot of stuff coming out, which is great, by the way, because the industry is still fledgling. When you think about it, we didn't have apps for buildings 20 years ago, right? Uh, maybe even 10 years ago. And, you know, I think, I think it's great that there's a lot of content and, and, and you guys do such a fantastic job of kind of uh, filtering through some of that noise for the industry. But there's a ton of noise in the sense that there's a, there's a boatload of companies out there saying, hey, you need an app for your building. Here's an app for your building. Look, we solved your problem of technology. Mm. Here's some technology. You can't have technology for the sake of technology alone, right? You can't give somebody an app that says, look, here's an app for your building. Now, if you want to pre-credential a visitor, you can, you can know which number to call or send an email to so-and-so to pre-credential a visitor, <laughs> right? Or, or, or book a conference room, like I mentioned earlier, or pay your rent. It just pops open a website that is yet another login that's disjointed. So an app for your building and, and this, this, this phrase of tenant experience that gets thrown out there uh, can't just be a collection of all of these other systems in one place, but rather an app for your building or technology for your building has to be a total tech stack for your mm. building. So outside of the things that, you know, that, that folks like us don't know how to do, which is accounting, we don't know, know how, we don't know how to count the beans, right? Which there's some great systems that do those things. Uh, and then there's great systems that do the actual pipes and wire and the buzzing, whirring things that make access control happen. So outside of those two kind of fundamental systems in buildings, and there's a couple others like the building automation systems and elevator systems and so on and so forth, Outside of those core fundamental building systems, all of the inside of what goes on in a building, the operational capabilities, the engagement, the access enablement, if you will, visitor management has to be fully automated and actually has to have software and hardware to make it happen, right? So it can never, never, never in a million years for us at least be, hey, press a button to book a conference room and it tells you to call this number to do so. It has to be a complete booking engine that lets you go through the motions of going, hey, I want it. I want it on this date. I want it for this time. It's available only for a maximum of X hours. Okay, I get that. I owe a hundred bucks to to actually book it. I can pay for it upon booking. Oh, by the way, I need it configured in a classroom style with these three add-on amenities and bring, please bring down the, you know, the projector that we need for this meeting. And it's all done native to our platform. There is not a third party solution. Another great example of that in our platform is visitor management. Although we're not the access control company, we are the visitor management software suite, if you will, for the building. And then it's not just software. There's a check-in kiosk and a digital intercom, you know, exterior or interior that facilitate touchless frictionless access for credentialed visitors. So you don't have to go talk to a staff member. You know, a good example of that is Tim uh, and, and Golub have this at 300 South Wacker, uh, one of their buildings. And, you know, the, the amount of time that now a visitor has to spend with a staff member or wait in line to talk to a staff member so they can be called upstairs and say, so-and-so is here, should we let them through? That just disappears, it it goes away. So now you've got a great experience for your tenants because it's easy to credential visitors. You've created efficiency for your staff where they don't actually have to talk to as many people. And then for the visitors that come to the building, 
they're going, they're walking away from that building going, wow, that building's pretty tech forward. I mean, that was easy. In other buildings, I have to wait at the reception desk to be let upstairs. I don't at 300 South Wacker. And Prasant, to jump in really fast, you know, in in that scenario where the where the guard is is taking the credential from the, the guest or the visitor, in, in the old way, they'd say, you know, may I see your ID? And then they'd have to take a, a photocopy of it and and then print a badge and, and do these different things where now that they have this seamless, you know, entry process, they can make this emotional connection between. So we can we can script and and brand, you know, our security staff to smile at them and let them know how welcome, you know, happy they are that they're they're welcome in the building and what a beautiful day it is out there. Those few seconds that that are spent between the visitor and my guard could be spent making a photocopy or could be spent making connection and, you know, a real friendly one. So again, that's, it's kind of like that we want this seamless technology to get lost and not have anyone think about it so that we can, we can engage with our, with our customer. I feel that so many people, maybe some proctor companies might not truly appreciate all the moving parts that come with, you know, connecting a building and making it seamless, or they come into maybe a bit too late. One of these uh, moving parts and realize, you know, that doesn't work for the client because you want it to all be on one sort of platform. Rishan, this leads us quite well into another question I love to ask. I've also heard you say that only part of what makes a product company successful is technology. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. Yeah. You know, around the office, we, we threw out there, look, we're, we're pretty great at technology. We've, we've built a technology stack that is second to none, hardware, software. We're, we're problem solvers. We're tinkers. We're engineers. We're the guys in the garage. But actually, what makes uh, Rise really succeed at what we do is that we're experts at change management. So uh, we focus heavily on how to get that technology to be actuated into the property. It's, it's less about the fact that we've built all this great tech. It's more about the fact that how do we help our clients and listen to them along the way? How do we help them succeed in deploying and implementing uh, this technology in the building? And Tim, I'd love to get your feedback. How do you think they can succeed in doing it? What's your, you obviously you use Rise Buildings as uh, one of the technologies, maybe you use more. What, what would you say makes a successful prop tech company? Well, you know, I, it, <laughs> I, I'm not Prasan and I, I'm, I'm not an entrepreneur, but I can say that in my experience with, with Rise, the business, aside from this technology that they're successful at, you know, I've seen them manage their growth really well. Their customer service is, is on par with any, any company that's had a long lineage of, of successful you know, customer service, they, they respond quickly. They've integrated into their company clearly the departments that they need to, to you know, service us as a, as a classic company or vendor. Mm. So they're managing their growth pretty well. It's obvious. Prasan, I was catching up with EQ office, Mickey Ward, who was singing your praises as well and your ability to adapt to a product and respond quickly. Similarly, you know, you do this for many of your other clients as well. That's the feedback I get from landlords, you know, big asset managers is that the, te- the technology doesn't respond quick enough. You know, how have you managed to customize your product and develop it so quickly to a wide range of clients? Is it, yeah, w- what's your secret source of that and delivering to them on time where I'm sure a lot of these clients are pretty difficult? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, 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 it's a great question. And, and you know, we love Mickey and, and love how her forward thinking yet pragmatic mind works in, in deploying really good tech into her buildings. But to answer the question, I, I think, you know, it all starts with how you build the platform, the platform on day one. It starts on day one, right? Uh, fr- from day one, we always envisioned Rise to be a total tech stack for any building multifamily, condo, rental, co-living, co-working, commercial side, you know, uh, traditional commercial, you know, uh, enterprise commercial, 
senior living, student housing, doesn't matter. If it's a building that has four walls and a roof and people that work or live there, staff that maintain and manage the building and managers that oversee that building, our platform works in it. And that's not to say that we're a custom solution or anything. We've built a product. It's not like we have to go code your app for you every time. But Mm -hmm. the way we built it from day one was that we built all of the different scenarios that could result in a building. And I'll I'll give you a simple example of that. In some buildings, the property management team wants a service request that, you know, a Joe Cubicle might have put in to be approved by their main contact at the tenant level before it makes it w- its way to the management team at the building. Other buildings say, nope, I'd, I'd want to see that right away. I want to see that service request from Joe Cubicle directly, and then I can triage it and, and, and fix the leaky valve or whatever, right? That is not a customization on our platform. That's a configuration, right? So we've built these significant, significant amount of you know, it's like 45 to the power of four workflows in our platform and tiny little configurations as on and off buttons, if you will, or boxes that get checked that quickly can adapt the platform to that property's specific needs. So, you know, building these properties and operating them in my past life, I knew that no two properties work the same. They have Mm -hmm. their own little bit of DNA. They all have their, their, their own nuances. So we built those nuances in early days into the platform. And then second part of that is that you have to listen to your client. You have to, have to, have to listen. And you have to deeply listen. You have to understand. You you don't just answer their literal question as in, hey, can you do this? It's not like, yes, yes, I can. Here, I did it. Press the button and off it goes. You have to ask the deeper question of why do you want it to do that, right? And when they tell you and when they get into it and when you can be an expert in the room as it relates to your technology, when our team can help the client see the pragmatic path from point A to B, which is something that they're trying to solve for, then we can quickly either through our workflows or the fact that we have a very agile platform and a a brilliant tech team that's, you know, 30 something people deep, we can respond very quickly. So, so when Mickey says like, Hey, we, we, we snap to it and respond. It, it, we, it looks, it looks that way to all of our clients because of the way the platform has been a architected from day one. Uh, and that's courtesy of Sid, my, 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 my co-founder and, and overall brilliant human, human being. But then B, we, we, we very, very intently listen and we intently listen all the time. Position yourself to thrive with a five-week course that covers the essentials of designing, developing, marketing, and operating offices in 2021 and beyond. Check out the Future Proof Office course at realinnovationacademy.com. Quote LMRE for a 10% discount. And talking about your clients, you know, have what changes have you seen and what they're looking for, you know, pre and post-COVID, I mean, we're still living in the world of COVID, but what changes have you seen? And then Tim, I'd love to hear a bit little more more about what what you'd be looking for as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, pre-COVID, let's let's just go way back, right? Let's go, let's go 12 plus months back when there was whenever that was. (laughs) Whenever, if anyone can remember that time. Yeah, pre-pre-COVID, there were there were a lot of things on the platform that were used for convenience. Like I'll give you a simple example. In the platform, you could as a as a resident or a tenant, you press a button and see how busy the fitness room was. It would tell you generally, you know, look, it's there's a lot of people in there or there's a few people in there. And that would maybe inform your decision on whether you went down and ran on the treadmill. For me, it's always been that I, I don't end up going down and running on the treadmill. Whether it's busy or not busy, the answer is always no, unfortunately, uh, which is sad. Uh, but that was a convenience-driven thing that was in our platform. Then COVID hit, then the industry scrambled on how to use technology and leverage it uh, to still create safety and still reopen amenities and things the like. So quickly, that convenience feature from our standpoint was adapted to, as an example, the ability to check literally COVID capacity in a certain area or room. And then not just check it, but also within the app, ability to reserve a slot in that area. So if you open up the what's called Rise Sense, it's a feature in the platform, open that up and you saw that the gym is is light and there's room there is in COVID capacity there uh, that you can that you can you know, attend and, and go to the go to the treadmill, then you could book yourself a slot to, to go run on that treadmill within the app itself. 
And only when you had a booked slot can you, within the app, swipe to unlock the door to the gym at the moment that you're in front of that door. And that technology, that automation of access layered on with the fact that we have to operate that gym a little differently now. It's not just like making a reservation and it's not just open for everybody. Only people that have a slot should have access so that the industry can only have 10 people in that gym uh, or whatever the, the number is you know, at a time. That, that was kind of COVID phase one, right? Uh, COVID hit, industry scrambled, technology was deployed. Uh, the stuff that was used for convenience purposes a year prior became applicable from a, a safety purpose in the kind of phase one, if you will, of COVID. As we're nearing you know, the end, hopefully, and as this vaccine rolls out, and as uh, the world starts to normalize again into the truly the new, the new normal, I think what we're finding and hearing from our clients and deploying in terms of technology is that the world has learned a few things from our experience within COVID. Things won't go back 100% to the way they were. They'll go back mostly is the, is the feedback that I'm getting, but some percentage of it will, will need to change uh, with the times. And I'll give you an example of that. You know, tenants are, are rethinking how much space they need in a building. So if, if, they need, if they had 40,000 square feet before and they had an option to pick up another 20,000 square feet, they've put those options, if you will, on pause or declined them. Or even worse, said, look, uh, I'm, I'm coming up on the ability to give up 10,000 square feet out of my 40,000. And here you go, landlord, you can have the 10,000 square feet back. I'm no longer paying rent for it. Uh, well, that creates a, obviously a problem for the commercial office industry. How do you get creative? How do you solve that problem? How do you look at the tea leaves and go, okay, well, what's going on here? Uh, and then how do you do it easier with technology? So those 10,000 square feet that that tenant gave back, gave back, that doesn't mean that 10,000 square feet equivalent of their employees just stopped working there. They're just now working remotely or working in a distributed manner. Those 10,000 square feet that they had at your building is, is, is in need of redistribution across your entire portfolio. So find a way to make that employee, which might be connected to the building already through a technology such as Rise, find a way for that employee of that tenant to book their desk or their conference room or their meeting space in one of your other buildings in the portfolio that's more close to home or in a distributed uh, manner. And, and these kinds of thoughts that the industry is going through, the ability to flexibly book office space on demand are, I think, what you know, technology is going to look like at least a portion thereof, kind of into this next phase of COVID and beyond. Oh, the next phase of COVID and beyond. God, it's, it's dangerous talking about it, isn't it? <laughs> Tim, from a client perspective, you know, what, what sort of changes have you seen or maybe what your business is looking for? Sure. Sure. You know, I, I, I think I'd be remiss to say that it's, it's not just simply pre or post COVID, not in this country anyway, but even... Um, worldwide, but we, we experienced really a revolution that showed itself with civil unrest in 2020 that I think has changed the way we will operate properties as well. So they, they kind of, in a weird way, are going to work together as it relates to you know security and safety. And I think that, that a product like Rise really helps us operate our, our properties more safely and more securely. So I think that that post um, COVID or post 2020 scenario will be benefited by the use of, of a product like Rise because we can we can really analyze the data and 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 see who is in a building, how many people are in a building, all of the all of the great features that that would provide us in in terms of an emergency if we had to evacuate the property, and really I think the kind of sexy use of beacons that that rise uses we can we can get pretty granular and find out where these people are so if you only have a few people left in a in say you know this scenario an evacuation and you have five people left in the building ideally you can know exactly where they are and they're in this suite over there and we can send help to them or find out why they haven't left so you know, beyond access control, which I think Rice does a really good job at, even though, as Prasant has told us, they're not an access control company. They do great at that. But 
and and beyond beyond you know limiting capacities when when certain phases of maybe a pandemic happen to limiting 25 or 50 percent in a fitness center all of those things can happen but i think from a security and safety perspective this this seamless technology of knowing who's in the building where they are and and helping in in kind of a crisis is really going to post post 2020 help how our buildings operate really really well well, yeah. yeah, fingers crossed they're all sort of back in those offices soon and so. get this vaccine to everyone. Now, we're just to sort of round this podcast off, you know, press on. We got it was last week or maybe the week before. I don't know. I keep losing track of time these days. But and we spoke about the idea of prop tech being truly borderless. Can you delve into this a little bit more? Yeah. And I think you said borderless there, right? Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah, the idea of prop tech being borderless, you know, really it, it it starts with the block by block borders, right? Why can't uh, a building in the suburban part of Chicago, for example, uh, use the same great technology that is in, you know, a downtown class A asset? Why should prop tech companies only be targeting kind of class A, you know, really shiny high rises downtown, as opposed to really bringing this property technology concept to everybody uh, of every single housing class and commercial office class in, in the country. Why can't they have the same ease and convenience and benefit of use of connecting to their communities and connecting to the building everywhere? And, that, and all what we just talked about was, say, just centric to Chicago, but expand that to anywhere in the world, right? Why can't good technology, much like, you know, the folks that like WhatsApp did, it was good technology, right? It was mm. one very unique feature. They brought it literally across the world and they did it almost overnight, it felt like, or Facebook or any of these guys that have that have built massive, you know, building or rather companies that 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 really do bring technology, good and bad sometimes, to the the, the, the user at any place in the world, right? Why can't that exist for PropTech? And one of the limitations has been that the prop tech industry itself, the companies that have built products within, have kind of tried to focus their eye on, oh, I got to go after the shiniest building because that's probably the client that's going to be willing to pay me my, you know, what I'm charging for for freight. And, and and we didn't look at the world that way. We looked at our platform as as more more ubiquitous and applicable to everybody uh, in the world, buildings and people, if you will. Mm. And, and so we set it up that way so that we could deploy anywhere in the world. You know, we just, we literally two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I went live in Lagos, Nigeria. You know, and we never, we never expected to go live in Lagos, <laughs> Nigeria, but here we are. We went live with our, with our friends at Churchgate, a great developer there. I went live in one of the, the World Trade Center uh, complexes that they're building there. And we did it all remotely, all during COVID. And we did it by using, for the, for the extent that it needed it, uh, local partners. So we have a network of partners that uh, if we do need something installed or we do need something field managed, it can be done. But, you know, we're trying to bring our technology to literally every corner of the world. And what we've proven, such as in the in the deployment uh, that we just had at Lagos, Nigeria, that we actually can do it remotely, safely, securely, using great technologies like web conferencing to do all the training and implementation and onboarding and where and if needed, using local partners to do any of the in the field stuff. Mm. Uh, and that allows our tech to literally go live anywhere in the world uh, with localized to any language, you know, being able to adapt to the needs and requirements. And even some of the, you know, we talked about workflows and kind of configurations earlier. There are nuances to how properties run in Lagos, Nigeria, compared to Chicago, you know, USA, right? Yeah. <laughs> properties run differently. And so, so our platform was able to adapt to, to their use cases and their workflows, which is really fun to see and, and kind of rewarding to see for me as a, as a founder. Mm. Um, that that you know we really truly can go live anywhere in the world and in and any class of building and we can do so safely and we can do so during covid and lockdown so so for for me that the fulfill the fulfilling uh need there is that get get this great technology into the hands of everybody uh, across the world yeah i think i think that's fascinating and if i try to explain that to say my parents 
they wouldn't understand how technology could be implemented into buildings, you know, from the other side of the world. And to be honest, I find that hard to believe. I find it in- insane how you can do that. So, yeah, well, let, let's see uh, what happens over the next sort of few years, few years in terms of technology. Now, we're coming to the end of the show, Tim and Brassam, but um, please, can you share the best way for our listeners to connect with you? And if you have any parting bit of information you'd like to leave the audience with, but um, Brassam, please go first. Sure. Yeah. The passing bit is, you know, for, for clients and, and, and folks in the, the real estate space that are listening, you know, it really, I know it's, it's daunting, right? Oh my God, am I going to make this move of doing technology in our buildings? Am, am I going to come to the, you know, kind of tech forward generation that, that is going to be your tenants if they aren't already and, and, and let them use great technology to operate buildings a, a little bit more efficiently. There, there's a lot of kind of, you know, not pessimism, but there's optimism actually, but there's, there's also a kind of fear of the unknown, right? And I get it. But to that, I would say to our, our clients and, and just generally the industry, you know, try it. Don't, don't, go, don't go portfolio wide tomorrow. Try it on a building. See if that, measure the data. See if people got happier. See, see if there's a better satisfaction survey uh, that came out, you know, a year after you did this technology or six months after. See what it did for your staff. See what it did for your management. See if it became easier to manage that building. And, and take the leap of faith, you know, use this time to plan and really take a take a try at bringing buildings, which look, by the way, 90% of the U.S. commercial building stock is still running off of clipboards, paper and pen, believe it or not. There's still there's still a large chunk of buildings that do visitor <laughs> management on a piece of paper and, and look, try it. And, and I think you'll see that there are there's a there's some really nice fruits at the end of that at, at, of that effort. You know, you can find out more about Rise Buildings, of course, on our website, at risebuildings.com. Certainly on LinkedIn. Feel free to follow me, connect with me on LinkedIn. I always love uh, yapping about all things property technology. So feel free to drop me a line and say hello. Awesome. Thank you for that. And Tim, what's the best way for the audience to connect with you? Yeah, I would agree. LinkedIn is the best way to, to connect with me. And the, the only thing that I would add that Prasan said in closing is, you know, our end user, our customers, our tenants could really care less about technology, most of them. And they, they care about whether or not their problems are solved and, and done so efficiently. For us, it's about connecting with them. And, and furthering our brand and making that really emotional connection with them and using technology as, as a vehicle to accomplish that. So, Awesome. Thank you both so much for joining us on the PropCast today. And um, I'm looking forward to catching up with you both after the show. Thanks, Thanks Lou. Pleasure. It was great, great to be here. Yeah, a pleasure. Thanks, Lou. Thank you for joining us this week on the PropCast and a big thanks to our special guests. Make sure you visit our website, www.nmre.co.uk, where you can subscribe to our show or you'll find us on iTunes and Spotify, where all good content is found. Whilst you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate it if you could rate and review us on iTunes or if you simply just spread the word. Be sure to tune in next Tuesday and I'll catch you later. Hi, this is Nelson from Property Quants. I'd like to invite you to join our Introduction to Data Science and Machine Learning for Real Estate seminar. To learn more, visit propertyquants.com slash seminar and use special code LMRE20 on Eventbrite for a discount. You're listening to a podcast company podcast. This was made by Podcast Syndicator, where we help you go from start to grow to making money with your podcast. Let us help you share your message and your voice with the world. Reach out now, Jason at podcastsyndicator.com or Brett at podcastsyndicator.com to find out more. Thank you for listening and do come back to hear nothing but the best podcasts.